who's who uh, in a minute. It is really good to see you. I wanted to thank you for making time for this at the close of this wild week, which someone described to me as the 2020 bonus scene after the credits have rolled. So um, I kind of prefer that to 2020, the sequel, because it seems smaller and shorter. <laughs> Um, I already know that one hour with you all will not be enough, but it's a good start. Um, to honor the time, I'm gonna ask everyone to take literally one minute and I will mute you if I can figure out how to do that uh, or less to say the following, your name, um, your organization, your city, and what made you say yes to this invitation um, today. And uh, and then I'm gonna ask Anne and Carol from Time Slips to, um, to speed walk us through what time slips is and what telestories is. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna just go from my screen. So George, you are at the upper left of my screen. Please introduce yourself. I'm George Sugros, the Executive Director of the Arts Board. And I'm happy to be here today uh, and happy that our friends at the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies and the Aroha Philanthropies have offered um, some support possible support for this program. Jenna, you are next on my screen. Hi, everybody. I'm Jenna Wikes. I'm the Director of Marketing at the Community Foundation of North Central Wisconsin in Wausau, Wisconsin. I see a couple people in here from Wausau. Um, I am in place of Sue Nelson, who is normally on this call today. She's our program officer. Um, and obviously at the foundation, we fund quite a bit of arts initiatives that take place in WASA. So we are part of this call to hear what's going on and amongst the state and to um, stay in touch with those of you around the state who are working in the arts. So thanks for having us. Thank you. Sherry, I have you next. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us. I'm Sherry Mealy. I am the Dementia Care Specialist with the Aging and Disability Resource Center in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, and our excitement about being part of this, I'm excited first to learn more about it, but I love the idea of giving people the opportunity to tell their story that what they have is important and needs to be heard and giving a little piece of hope with it. Thank you. Caitlin, you are next on my screen. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Caitlin Burl. I'm the Folk and Traditional Arts Coordinator at the Arts Board, so based in Madison with George and Karen and Dale. And um, yeah, I work specifically with traditional artists around the state, and I am just looking forward to hearing from and learning from you all. So. Thanks, Caitlin. And you are up next. Obviously, I'm taking this in no particular order. Am I the only Anne? Um, hi, everybody. Anne Basing. I'm in Milwaukee. I'm with Time Slips, and I'm a professor now of English at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. <clears throat> and I will say more about what, um, what, and why I'm involved in this project soon. Thank you, Kelly. I have you next. Hi, I'm Kelly Strickland. I'm the Executive and Artistic Director of the Widener Center for the Performing Arts, uh, serving Northeast Wisconsin in Green Bay. And um, what was your question, Karen? Why did we ex accept the invitation? Yeah, why are you spending an hour with this on this topic with this group? <laughs> I just, I didn't have enough Zoom meetings today and I just wanted one more. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we have invested a lot in the last several years in our uh, arts education and community engagement program here, specifically training some of the freelance artists as teaching artists. Um, our emphasis has been around the performing arts, um, but we are, this is a population that we're very interested in expanding into. It also dovetails with a, um, a uh, region-wide storytelling festival that we're working on for 2022. Um, and we also convene um, a large group of freelance artists and um, arts organizations in our region on a quarterly basis. Perfect, thank you. Debbie, I'm turning to you next. 
Hi, I'm, I'm Deb Trader. I'm with the Wausau Conservatory of Music in Wausau. Um, the whole program just intrigued me and I'm, trying, I'm hoping to find out if this would be a good fit with us as well and have some fun with it. Great, thank you. Kathy, you are next. Thanks, Karen. I'm Kathy Foley. I'm the director of the Lee Aki Whitson Art Museum in Wausau. And we have a long history of working with older adults through the SPARK program. We were one of the first SPARK five and a long great high Anne of working with Anne Basting as well. Um, we continue to, uh, to use and rely on time slips. So eager to know how we might play a role. Awesome, thank you. Diane, I have you next on my screen. Diane Veal at the Lucille Tax Center for the Arts in Spencer, a little to the west of Wausau. Um, I'm on this because Karen invited me. <laughs> and I'm always, um, at least in the last few years, just very much on a path to try to find a better way to get stories out of people. And um, I find stories intriguing, but it, I have a hard time tracking them down sometimes. So. Maybe I'll learn something from this and thank you for inviting me, Karen. Nice, thank you. Erin, I have you next on the screen. Hi, I'm Erin Wells. I'm the um, Community Resources Manager at the Aging Disability Resource Center of Central Wisconsin. And um, our offices serve Lincoln, Langlade, Marathon and Wood Counties. And I am primarily in our Merrill office, but I'm throughout our whole region. And I am here today kind of along the same lines as um, what Sherry mentioned, just uh, learning how we can connect older adults. It's just been a very isolating time for them. And I'm interested in uh, kind of the creative approach, this kind of a different approach of engaging our older adults right now. Thank you. Jennifer, I have you next. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Jennifer Clark and I am a community health educator with the Aging and Disability Resource Center of Central Wisconsin. So like Erin had mentioned, um, covering uh, Lincoln, Langley, Wood and Marathon counties. Um, and we're just really excited to uh, learn more about the, the Tell Us Stories project. Um, it's something new and exciting for us. And um, so we're just really excited to be a part of it. Thank you. Carol, you are up next. Hi, I'm Carol Varney. I'm at Time Slips. I'm the executive director there. Um, I'm sorry to report that I'm in San Francisco. Um, so apologies. And um, I'm excited to meet you all. Thanks for being here. <laughs> I, I don't believe in the sincerity of that apology, actually. I just want to put that on the record. Okay. Peggy, you are up next. <laughs> I'm Peggy Kurth. I'm a community health educator with the Aging and Disability Resource Center. So I work with Erin and Jen. Um, I'm primarily based in Wausau, but again, cover across our four county region. And I'm excited to be on the call just to kind of like what Erin and Jen already said about finding new ways to connect older adults in our community. Thank you, Tim. You are next. Hi, I'm Tim Parker. I'm the president and CEO of the Community Foundation of North Central Wisconsin. I'm a little bit of a rookie to Wisconsin as I just moved here a couple months ago. So I'm getting to know the community, its members and the good work that's being done here. Uh, so I'm on the call to support you in any way we can and try and identify ways that we can take a a little bit more of a leadership role in helping promote, uh, you know, good initiatives like this that are going on. Awesome. Well, welcome. And uh, you've clearly picked a, a really great community to uh, to settle in in Wisconsin. That's Absolutely. <laughs> Beth, I have you next on the on the screen here. Hi, I'm Beth Kowalski Lemke. I'm from the Neville Public Museum in Green Bay. Um, I'm very much interested in the program because our team is just, we're collaborative by nature. So when Karen, when you sent the email, we love working with you and, and the arts board, as well as our ADRC here in Brown County is just, their team is absolutely rock star. So having that ability to have that connection and hopefully be a venue um, for artists and connecting artists to 
uh, the program is exciting to me. So thank you for the invitation. Great, thank you for saying yes. All right, Terry, I have you next. And I think I have you frozen. Um, or it might be me. Okay, I'm just gonna keep clicking until I got it. Um, I'm one of those rock stars. Thanks, Beth. <laughs> Terry Bradford, caregiver specialist with the Brown County ADRC. Um, I'm, I'm just, again, I'm just reiterating everything that everybody else has said. It sounded interesting. Barb Michaels, who is our prevention coordinator said, hey, what do you think? She's never led us down a wrong path before. So um, I'm just kind of tagging along because Barb thought it was good. Sherry thought it was good. So here I am to learn more. Awesome, thank you. Katie, I have you next on my screen. Awesome, <clears throat> oh, pardon me. Hi everybody, um, I'm Katie Lang. I'm the Director of Education and Community Engagement at the Grand Theater in Wassa. Um, hi Debbie. <laughs> um, I'm just interested to hear um, how my role as the person who engages with the community, how we can engage with um, older adults in our community and um, be a source of connection for them. Great, thank you. And Dale, I think you're the last one, although I'll do a check in a moment. Can you introduce yourself, please? Dale Johnson, one of the staff members at the Arts Board. Um, I'm busy processing grant awards, so I'm trying to get checks out to everybody, but I've also had the, the uh, pleasure of witnessing firsthand some of the uh, good that can come from projects of this type. I guess I'm thinking of Madison Symphony's Heartstrings program. And, and uh, so I see the value in this and, and want to learn as much as I can. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Have I missed anyone? If I have, please unmute yourself and speak now. No, but this is Terry. I did. I'm, I can only attend till about one o'clock and then I do have to bug off. So just if I disappear, didn't want to be oh. rude and just pop out. We won't take it personally. Thank you Thank so much. You. Okay. <laughs> so Anne and Carol, I'm going to turn to you and ask that you take those 10 minutes to speed walk us through time slips and tell us stories for those in the crew that are not familiar with your work or that particular project from this fall. Thank you. I'll start, Carol. Um, Carol's the executive director. I am, uh, I don't know what I'm doing, but <laughs> founder, founder, collaborative team partner. Chief inspiration um, officer. Yeah, chief inspiration officer. Um, chief, I, I was about vying for chief enchantment officer, but uh, that's a different CEO. Um, so in some ways, this, this call and this Zoom call with all of this loveliness of everybody on this Friday um, is sort of a culmination of my 20 years in Wisconsin, you know, tr mobilizing for meaning making at every moment of our lives. And um, it's a little bit of, a, of a, a preaching to the choir because we all clearly know the potential um, and feel the pain of the separation of meaning making and, and art and culture um, and all of the assets that that sector has to offer and the separation of that from health and social services often as these two separate spheres and the the spark alliance being an early um, an early integrator um, and uh, and sort of the time slips work that we've been doing all the way along through simple these simple techniques of, of awakening people's creative confidence and creative capacity to know that they have the ability to be creative beings uh, and the nurturing that that can do and the meaning what what good for well-being that does for our souls and how it helps us build connection to not only caregivers but just people in our lives and helps reconnect us to community um, i think the pandemic has made this all too uh, apparent that isolation and disconnection sets us into a, um, a, a lack of resilience spiral um, that, that we've really seen. And I think some of the, the folks who are on those front lines in the ADRC working with caregivers um, who suddenly find themselves even more isolated um, can attest to. Um, so the, the 
Time Slips has been doing work, as you know, for many years, trying to, to make, bring creative engagement and creative expression to people. Um, we really began with working with people with dementia, but find that um, those techniques are accessible to older adults and people in general. Um, so it, it acts as a connective tissue for older adults who find themselves isolated, caregivers, people with cognitive or physical challenges, disabilities, just as a way to knit them back into their communities um, and give them a, a sense of, of personal expression and, and um, meaning making capacity. Um, the Tell a Stories project, we've been um, really just it becomes another avenue for um, making these tools accessible to people. Um, we've been doing it by, by web, by in-person groups, individuals, um, you know, in, offering training, as Kathy said, through the Spark Alliance with museums and cultural programs for many years. Um, we, we wanted to see if this could be done just by the telephone. Um, several years ago with the Islands of Milwaukee project where, that we began working with Meals on Wheels and um, telephone reassurance programs and found that it really could be. So over the last five years or so, we've been slowly piloting and expanding this pilot. And then with the pandemic, we were able to get some funding to support a larger um, next tier pilot, uh, hiring 10 Milwaukee artists, um, training them. Um, uh, I can't remember who, who said that they had trained teaching artists. Um, uh, yeah, um, we're training artists as teaching artists. We, we did that here in Milwaukee with 10 artists and then um, trained them in this tell stories approach. We did 12 weeks of phone calls with them, um, but we're uh, that and the, the half an hour little simple story shaping story exchanges, relationship building focus, but also skill building focus that ended in a, a collaborative um, product that, um, that came out of the experience of the story exchange. Um, the, we did some simple evaluation around it with our partners, ARIS um, and the Milwaukee Christian Center and really found a pretty profound impact on, on isolation and loneliness um, that we were really happy with. Um, you know, it's common sense that that kind of a program would ease some sense of isolation. And um, I'm just really thankful that the, uh, the feedback showed that it did. Um, so the next phase of it really came about, um, we're, we're working to get this out much more broadly. We had already started with um, folks in the CARN network, um, even before this opportunity came up, just to say, look, telephone is accessible. We know it can happen even with people who don't have smartphones or don't have um, laptop or Wi-Fi or broadband or any of those barriers to connection um, that we could really make this possible. Um, the great thing, I mean, my, gosh, I love that the, the music and theater and visual art could potentially all be part of this because you can make music through the phone. Um, you can make poetry through the phone. You can make movement through the phone. You can do all of these things. Um, and I'm just uh, thrilled to, for this opportunity, both to sort of um, bring in this collaborative network, but also have an eye towards sustainability and where we go from here. This feels like just a, a tiny little grant that could help us um, be in conversation with each other about where it could go potentially uh, next. Um, Carol, did you wanna add anything to that uh, long diatribe I just spewed there? Um, I'll ju I guess just to give a little more context for what actually happened this, this summer, um, it was 10 artists and they were all based in Milwaukee. They were from all different disciplines, which I thought was, um, especially interesting and that people did make work that was anything from dance to audio to visual art to books. Um, and uh, each artist worked with 10 elders and uh, by phone once a week. And uh, we also found that, you know, because of the pandemic and 
with people not being able to get together in person, it not only um, supported elders who were feeling isolated and lonely, it also supported the artists themselves who otherwise haven't been able to get together and meet in person. And in fact, I was talking with Sam, who was the project manager yesterday, and she said they're still, they still have a text thread with all the artists on it that every day people continue to check in with each other and share information. So just a, a, to provide a little bit more context. Oh, thank you for that. And you just um, eliminated a dream I didn't know that I had, which is that we get similar texts those kinds of threads going in different parts of the state among the artists. That would be completely awesome. Um, would Carol, would you or Anne be able and willing to put the link to the amazing sort of culminating um, showcase of sure. um, Milwaukee that, television? Anna. If you could do that in the um, chat, I am going to really encourage everyone once that is in there to click on that and don't look at it just now. But you know, hold it so that when we're done, you can um, get a sense of the celebration, which uh, I was privileged to attend and observe, and it was pretty awesome. Um, and so, when this opportunity for um, finding uh, or taking advantage of this uh, this funding opportunity from Araha and NASA uh, came up, the Telestories project was a very easy. Um, uh, model to consider for that. Uh, and so um, I picked up the phone after talking with our staff and uh, and checked in with uh, Anne and Carol at time slips and they were up for it and they connected with um, some ADRCs and the, the two that rose to the top immediately because frankly of your quick response and your um, enthusiastic response. It, it wasn't a quick no, it was a quick enthusiastic, oh yeah, we want to know more. Um, it, it made this come into into play uh, quickly and and relatively easily, because while I am uh, the last person to look for easy answers right now in 2021, <laughs> I am also very aware of our relative um, capacities uh, as organizations. And so um, we want this to be something that this pilot um, that is something that we can do unusually quickly at the Wisconsin Arts Board. Normally we don't, we're not able to move this quickly, but funding is available as of March um, if we get this grant. And, um, and so the need is now. Uh, so we wanna make it happen as quickly as we can. Um, so given all of that, I, I, the last thing I'm gonna do is read a PowerPoint, but I do want to just highlight a couple things that I had included in the um, in the synopsis that uh, that I sent out and the timeline that I sent out to you all, and then I want to stop talking and hear what questions, ideas, um, you know, are we really is this really a good project for us to partner with right now? Those kinds of conversations are are all welcome in this uh, in this next half hour. Um, but I did just wanna say that we, we want this to be an easily replicable model um, uh, that within five years could grow to bring meaningful creative expression and community building programming um, to and with older adults across the state um, and, and to make the program sustainable by bringing the arts and culture and health and social service sectors together in partnership. Clearly, some of you guys are already in partnership, and that is completely fabulous. Um, and, and would that that were so in every county and region of our state? It isn't yet, but it might be, you know, in the next however many years. So this is a, this is a movement toward that particular goal. Um, I did lay out uh, in the um, synopsis uh, what we are asking the arts partners to consider doing and what we're asking our ADRC partners um, and also the Hmong American Association, which is based in Wausau. Uh, Yi Lang could not join us this morning or today, but I am uh, hopeful. He's certainly enthusiastic about the project, so yay. Um, so hopefully we can include them as well. And, and this doesn't have to be an in-group. So if you know of other resources or partners or groups that um, make a lot of sense to to uh, include, please let me know that. Um, I'm thinking particularly arts groups, but whatever. Um, yeah, 
in a sense, uh, in this pilot project, I feel a little bit like the more the merrier, as long as we can keep uh, keep moving. So the so the arts partners um, sharing your knowledge of the region and the artists who live and work there. Uh, you are more connected in many ways than than uh, we are at the Arts Board. Um, help us market the March 2021 training opportunity to the area artists. They don't have to be just within this region, but that we'd really like for those to be at least the priority. Um, again, we can we can uh, we've envisioned training up to 20 uh, artists. Um, in the Brown County and the central Wisconsin, that four county region, because again, related to the thread that you were talking about earlier, Carol, um, if we can build relationships between those artists and the arts groups and, and aging resources uh, that are in those regions, uh, that would be awesome. Um, we have not yet set that March training opportunity date, uh, but we will be doing that soon. Um, it would be great if you could provide or help us find a uh, public space for an in-person version of the culminating project uh, showcase, if that can happen. Um, it might just be done virtually, but I figure there's no harm in brainstorming. Um, and then to help the, promote the project's progress to the broader community via your media contacts, you know, the organizational uh, um, newsletters, whatever. Uh, I think that one of the things we want to accomplish here is to communicate that older adults are incredibly creative and they are uh, uh, creating in an ongoing way. And it'd be great if their communities sort of knew more about that. Um, and, and the ADRCs, we're looking to help you, uh, we're looking for you to help find those 40 older adults who want to participate in this. Um, and then promote the virtual culminating showcase of the work created through this project by inviting um, the Wisconsin Aging Services community to attend and get excited and want to replicate it there. So that is more than enough from me at the moment. I would like to stop talking and open this up to questions um, or thoughts or whatever from you all. So please, um, can just I, can I add, Yeah, and something. Um, the other thing I would ask of the um, arts partners and the ADRs and the aging services partners um, is in your area, I was totally thrilled and wrote down the 2022 uh, storytelling festival. Um, if there are any existing programs in your area like that, that, um, that this could get folded into, I always think that the, the better thing is not to layer a project on top of an area, but to integrate it into um, things that are already happening in the area, so that you can you can weave them together um, for greater impact, um, guiding people to existing programs and and services and things like that. So, if there are ideas you have from that, um, like the, the storytelling festival would be great, um, or any any other things that happen in that time frame. Um, we may have an opportunity to to write another grant for um, a performative um, support for a performative piece. Um, so we'll just we can pursue that as well. That might be able to to help with this. Thank you. And if I could piggyback on on something you just said, um, one you said uh, during this time frame. Uh, beyond the March training and these four meetings, as I'm looking at Karen's document, what time frame are we talking about here? So, Ann, go ahead, Ann. No, I was gonna, I was gonna send it to you. Yeah. Um, so that I, I think I included a timeline in one of those emails. I tried not to pepper you with too many. Um, but essentially, the the we will know on February 22nd whether we got the grant. I would like to see if everyone can pencil in on the 23rd, and I will send out a doodle poll because I love doodle polls um, to to just reiterate that for you. But I'd like to just call a meeting on the 23rd, um, whether or not we get the grant. Because if we don't, I don't want this to die. I want to talk about what future possibilities might exist. Uh, so, and if we do get it, then boom, out of the gates, here we go. Um, so March is going to be when the artists get uh, their training in um, 
sort of best practices in working with older adults and the specific time slips um, model, to, to, sorry, tell us stories model. Um, and there will be four artists that are involved in that particular piece that are trained to do the, the eight week thing, but, but um, 20 artists will receive a sort of broader training, um, which is part and parcel of the work that the, the four artists will do. It's probably too much information. Um, and then uh, as of April 5th, I think is the first uh, aiming for the first of the calls that week, um, ending in May, and then doing the, we had envisioned, I had envisioned uh, a culminating showcase like right after. So Strike While the Iron's Hot and the older adults uh, who've just created are excited um, and the artists who've worked with them are excited. So I was thinking of some time in June there um, for that. But uh, but in talking with Anne and Carol earlier this week, you know, that, that may or may not make sense um, because I had envisioned everybody just kind of saying, this is an amazing standalone event. Let's just market it to all the arts groups and, and uh, aging resources around the state. And let's uh, have that be its thing with lots of people coming in June. And, uh, and Anne said, maybe it'd be better to attach it to something that's already happening. So there's a built-in audience. Um, and then we layer on top of that. So, but that's the time frame uh, for this particular pilot. Does that help, Kelly? It does. Yes. Um, so, oh, is that me making that crazy noise? I don't hear it. Um, <laughs> so to, to add to the part B of, of my response to Anne's comments were, um, there are two, two partners that I think about um, in hearing the details of this project. One is uh, we, we come with a UW affiliation here, um, the Innovation in Aging. Um, initiative here on campus. I think there are folks over in the College of Health, Education and Social Work that would be interesting partners. Um, and I also think about the Digital and Public Humanities Project here on campus. Mm. Um, if depending on how this, what the process ends with, uh, whether it is a, a digital um, kind of thing or um, whether it morphs into something down the line that that might be in person, um, and then find my final contribution as a as an arts um, participant in this conversation would be that you know, we do have three um, performance venues obviously that we would be happy um, to um, share for these purposes. That timeline doesn't sound like anything we're hearing that would accommodate a live event. Right. Right. Yes, thank you. Um, I feel like that's part of the investment in this, like the, the first part of this is to get this method Im embedded, I think, and understood. Um, and, and then seeing it as for sustainability, for feeding, continuing as a, as a mechanism for feeding stories from these folks into uh, existing um, structures so that um, people can't say, oh, I wish, I wish we had access to older adults or caregivers in our communities who could participate in the storytelling festival. Oh my gosh, you do. Look at that. <laughs> so, so it's much more of like a future investment in creating those, um, those kind of irrigation pathways uh, so that they can feed what you're doing. Um, the other thing I'll say is that Time Slips has a, a program called Next Gen, which offers training and service learning um, to students in high schools and colleges and universities. And last semester, I did tell the stories with my creative writing students. Um, and so both like the Marathon County and um, uh, uh, Green Bay um, with access to students, you also have a, a, an opportunity for this to be that kind of to be an ongoing source of energy and personnel, uh, volunteer power um, to feed this kind of a program in an ongoing way. And they, the people from those programs, the, the faculty or instructors might be interesting people to pull into that first training. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks, Kelly, for those questions. Other thoughts or questions from the crew? Hey, Sean, I just saw that you joined us. Great. Hello. 
Hello, hello. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm thinking of um, the resources that Brown County has. Certainly, you just referenced the Marathon County or the UW Marathon County um, campus and programs. Um, any, any questions or thoughts about who else should probably be part of this conversation or at least know about this pilot, even if they're not part of the conversation directly? Um, if so, do not um, hesitate to put it in the chat or call it out. I am not tracking the chat and I see there are lots of little messages there, which is great. Um, but feel free to share your voice as well as your words via the chat if you would like to do that. And thanks again, Carol, for putting in the, the link to the culminating telestories thing. Um, I'm just absorbing all of this and um, my mind is just racing. So I'm not exactly sure. Um, I don't know what questions to ask yet. I feel like there's so much unknown still. So I'm just kind of in listening mode, but um, and I don't know if Barb had shared, but one year we had connected the students at Aldo Leopold School. Um, so these are like middle school aged kids and we paired them with an older adult with our agency and they come down and multiple times interview them and then wrote their story down and then drew pictures and we had an expo where they got their pictures taken with their paired older person and I just love that cross-generational piece to it as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there's certainly been a lot of models uh, along those lines and they just seem, every single one of them, to be uh, really effective and awesome. Um, one of my concerns is always at the end of a project uh, when you're dealing with uh, a, a population that is vulnerable uh, or fragile, which is not always the case of older people. I will speak from my 84 mother and say they can be incredibly strong and not vulnerable at all. Thank you very much. But, um, but, but at the end of the project to this say, okay, well, it's been great to plumb the depths of your soul. Awesome eight weeks. Goodbye. Good luck. And there's a cutoff. And there's suddenly no access to continued outlets for creativity or continued ways to connect. And that can create a situation that is worse than it was before they got involved. Um, and one of the reasons that I'm excited to, to, have, tele, to, to have Anne and Carol involved <laughs> with time slips is because I know that that is, that is not one of their, uh, that's not how they do their work. Um, but, but as we think about what happens after this time, I really hope that if we, I'm going to say when we get this grant, I really hope that these eight weeks can also develop um, uh, foundations and systems that will carry on uh, after this particular piece of the project and the work is done. So whether that is, you know, embedding some, some uh, training or, or brainstorming with ADRC staff and those who do safety checks to embed you know, creative questions and creativity within those safety checks, uh, that would be something that continues on. And Anne, I think you were the one who brought that idea up and out earlier. Yeah, I think um, the, the other piece is like, if your museums, uh, their education programs, you know, sometimes you hear a lament in, um, uh, performing arts or museums that are, you know, our audiences are aging, we need to attract younger people, but you also, there are also people who've never set foot into your <laughs> building who you could reach by the phone. Um, and it gives a new avenue for new people to come in, no matter what age they are. Um, if you already have a theme, knowing how far ahead cultural organizations plan their exhibits and their, and their programming, and say a theme for two years from now, um, that theme can get broken um, 
into educational arts pieces that could be offered by phone. Um, and God willing, we get ourselves out of this pandemic and people might be then interested to coming to in-person events as well. So it can be a feeder mechanism for existing educational programs, say like the SPARC programs um, or similar programs that you have. Um, that's the idea. So if people like, I just uh, struck up a fantastic conversation, intriguing conversation with the folks at the International Crane Foundation who are interested in working with me to turn their educational folklore pieces around cranes around the world into a creative engagement project for caregivers. I'm like, that is fascinating. <laughs> and I could see dance being part of that and all kinds of different things. So if there are um, uh, uh, themes, programs, exhibits that you're planning, um, you know, bring that into the conversation. That will be really uh, exciting. And before I forget, would you please put in the chat who you're talking with at the International Crane Foundation because I wanna follow up and encourage them to apply for a Creative Communities Grant from us. Um, for those on the call who aren't familiar with our project grant program, it supports um, projects that begin as of July 1, this coming year and end through uh, and finish by June 30th of 2022 uh, uh, that engage the arts and community on some level. And um, <clears throat> whether that's arts education or folk and traditional arts or local arts. And while the grants are small, you know, up to $6,000, they catalyze uh, some really interesting uh, local investment and, and activity. So if you get creation and presentation grants, you can't apply but anyone in your community that you know that's a nonprofit can. So um, Anne, thank you for sharing that because I want to encourage that. And ADRCs, I would really love it if you know of other ADRCs or aging services in your area, uh, including you, um, that would want to do something uh, to, to move this forward as of July of 2021. Let's talk about what a project like that might look like because that too would be really great to be able to support. Um, as I say, I really don't want this to be a one and done. Karen, a uh, comment or kind of a comment question. Um, it's most interesting to me, the concept of using the phone because one of the challenges here in Marathon County, as well as the additional counties that our local ADRC serves is the, <laughs> is the size of the county. And um, we at the Woodson Art Museum, um, Anne might remember a project that um, we were, um, that we tried desperately to launch um, to, to, um, to connect with older adults who were isolated in the county and to bring them to provide both transportation and food and to bring them into the city, um, to bring them into Wausau for the art museum, for the Grand Theater, for uh, the Conservatory of Music, um, the Planetarium at West um, High School, ballet, I mean, all these things. And in fact, um, we were unsuccessful in this project. And we were unsuccessful um, because there was a reluctance, um, there was a reluctance uh, among participants to leave the comfort of their environments. And um, despite transportation being provided and food incorporated, um, working through churches, um, working through other social service agencies. Um, it was a fascinating learning experience, but it was not successful. So um, I'm especially interested in the opportunity here um, because I think the need is great. Well, thank you for allowing us to benefit from that learning, because I think you're absolutely right, and not just in your region. Um, well, any responses to what Kathy just said? I, don't I, I just want to say, geography 
geography and distance are are not just perceived barriers, they're real barriers and transportation issues. Um, you know, this was built around um, older adults perhaps not wanting to drive in the evening. Um, we had worked a, a system by which daytime performances were an option. So again, there, and this was a number of years ago. I mean, this was, this was long before Zoom, <laughs> probably long before other, <laughs> other things that have connected us today um, that maybe are also not available um, where uh, in areas where broadband access is an issue. So it, there are some, there are complexities here um, that, that this, anyway, interesting. Diane. I would concur with Kathy there. We have done um, certainly less um, large projects in that respect, but we have had a, a difficult time pulling in senior adults for daytime things, even if they have transportation involved or um, free tickets, that sort of thing. It's they, they don't go out very far around our neck of the woods. Even if it's right from the village, we don't, we can't, we can't put them on a bus and bring them 10 blocks to our facility for a free performance um, with much success. And again, that was years back, but we, we kind of stopped doing it because there was so little response to it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would concur, Kathy, unfortunately. And maybe things have changed now. I don't know. I know we have a lot of folks that have no, um, no technology you know, I short of calling them on the phone or showing up when I don't even want to do that, showing up at their doorstep with a mask on, I can't reach them with anything that's more visual than a letter, you know, so it is a concern. That's a really great segue to um, turning back to uh, the partners and saying, uh, especially the ADRCs, uh, but others, are you comfortable helping us if we can create this? It's not, uh, if it's left up to me, it's not gonna be stellar, but, uh, but it will be an uh, at least effective, adequate uh, flyer, digital something or other uh, that hopefully time slips can maybe help weigh in on the design of. <laughs> so that um, you have something to share with the older adults with whom you work uh, as you, I, I really would love it if we could have 40 people involved with this. Um, it'd be awesome actually to have a little bit of a waiting list, but that would make me sad too, so maybe not. But um, if we could have 40 people, um, does that seem reasonable to those of you who are um, helping connect underconnected adults? And, and do you feel like that's something that you could do? Uh, and if you need help with it, what would that help look like? This is Erin. Um, I think, I mean, I, I never want to overpromise, but I, I do think that's, it seems reasonable. Um, I, th there are a number of partners I have in mind um, to connect with to try to, to get the older invites, older adults invited to participate. Um, and I'd be curious too, Sherry probably also works closely with, but I, I look at it as being like an individual ask rather than sending out lots of flyers. I like the idea of sending out flyers and getting the word out there just to drum up interest, but actually getting the older adults involved will probably be a one-on-one -on -one ask. Um, but if anybody else has anything to add on that. No, I agree with that. I think, um, you know, our day programming um, place, whether it's the people who attend or their caregivers, um, that might be uh, like here, everybody gets a flyer, you know, if you're interested, but I think you're, you're most likely going to get buy-in from people who get a personal ask an invite, a discussion, um, kind of um, an encouragement. I can think of many people, caregivers that I work with that would most likely jump on this, um, but wouldn't probably respond to an email or a flyer or something posted. But if I asked them about it and told them about it, they jump on it. I was kind of thinking that maybe the flyer would be something for you to show them uh, visually after you made mm -hmm. those asks. So that's yep. that's really helpful. Kelly, you've unmuted, yeah? Yeah, on the flip side, um, what do you anticipate the process being for the artists? I mean, I, 
will there be some kind of application process? We we work with about 12 teaching artists here. I don't want to, um, if it's going to be an invitation only based on, you know, time slips evaluation or things like that, or should I send it out to my full list of 180 artists? So thank you. Great question. Um, I love that you have a list of 180 artists. That just makes me so happy. I didn't know your list was that big. <laughs> um, quick question for the older adult, and then let's get to that. Um, does it make sense to you all that we wait until we have word of the funding on February 22nd before we ask you guys to start making those one-on-ones? Okay, I'm seeing nods. Awesome. Um, and so involving the artists, uh, it is there is going to be an application process. Um, and there's gonna be two actually. One is gonna be, um, and Anne and Carol, correct me if I get this wrong, but uh, having time slips, uh, uh, maybe with some input from us, uh, select uh, four, the four artists that will do these, these eight week calls and be, be involved in the project on that level and then, and, and that will include letters of reference, you know, whatever, that's gonna, that's a different kind of application. It's kind of a job application thing. And then the other is application for the training, which is you're a teaching artist, you're, you're interested in being a teaching artist and you're awesome. Um, we can do 20. Uh, would you like to be a part of that experience to, to learn more about deeply engaging with older adults and the, and the, um, and the pieces around that? Anne, did you want to say something on that? No, okay. Uh, no, no, other than just the um, reiterating sort of our goals here are um, for this to be a, a really successful first phase um, value demonstration so that we can um, make the argument that this could be incorporated into budgets in various ways and, and to, to grantors as well. Um, and that, um, yeah, that's that's it. And also with an eye toward diversity. Yeah, oh, thank you for that. Um, yes, that was another piece of this to make sure that those of you who have the capacity to spread the word to the artists um, in your community about this training opportunity, if you could please help us figure out where we can get the word out, um, especially where artists of color are gonna see it. That would be awesome. Kelly, you had something else. To, so to, just a clarifying question about the four artists who are going to be selected to work for eight weeks or get the receive the training for eight weeks for this specific project. And then to refer to maybe Anne's example earlier, if there's a member of our community who teaches creative writing and would benefit to the point of sustainability and exponential impact, right? Like, is that something separate or is that this too? I would say they would be great candidates to be uh, invited to apply for the train, the training for the larger 20 people that we could do training for. Um, that, that would be my, my thought there, Karen, is that? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that, that um, we were talking about earlier this week was how that those trainings might be sort of synchronous so that there's a training uh, to which, you know, the 20 artists and the four artists are, are, are invited or come to whatever. Um, and then the, the 20 um, get the, thank you so much. This is awesome. We're now gonna focus some very specific tele stories kinds of training uh, on the four artists who've been hired to do this project with us. Anne and Carol, does that jive with what we talked about earlier? Yeah, just, just to maybe reiterate, um, the, the training for the four artists is, is this little thing, and then the training for the 20 is, outside, is bigger, but they're the same thing. So they would all be participating together and then break off if there's more specific things we need to do with the four artists. Um, so it, it, it's, a, it's a way to sort of introduce the concept um, and potentially embed it, say, in other structures like teaching service learning structures, things like that. Um, I, being a creative writing instructor, I see them as local artists as well. They just happen to be these great um, at these sort of turnkey people who can mobilize additional resources in your community. 
Yeah. Um, for the 20 artists, because I know if, if I put this out there, which we too have a very large database of, of visual artists, um, they're going to want to know if there's a stipend. I'm assuming the grant is, the, the application process would show that piece as well. So the so the art the four artists that we are hiring to do this work there is absolutely a stipend. The artists who are welcome to participate in the training and learn more about the best practices in doing this work there's not a stipend for that training. Okay. But there is no cost to that training either. Okay. We are underwriting that piece. There is a cost to that training and it's well invested and it is uh, and it is underwritten by this grant. Okay, that's what I was needing to know. We are hoping, honestly, that we get sort of 10 and 10, so that we get 10 artists uh, who apply uh, for the training in the, um, in the Brown County area and 10 in the central Wisconsin area. And, and we're looking for a balance again to create that, um, the, the uh, cohort that we were talking about earlier. But honestly, if there are lots and lots of artists who apply and we can only train 20, um, you know, and we, we should probably talk about that, but also they are, they are self-identifying as people who are interested in this and I don't wanna lose their names. So we will figure out a way to, um, to respond in a positive way to those applications one way or another, whether they are part of the 20 or not. And the, the miracle of the Zoom era is that it might, might, we have to consider it, but it might not be extra burden on us to open it to say 30 or whatever. My concern is just um, making sure that um, if you get the training, what it, that the, the perception of the opportunity m is matching uh, the experience and the training so that you don't train a whole bunch of people for something that is, hasn't caught up yet to where they are. Those opportunities don't exist yet. That's why training the, the creative writing teachers, they could actually mobilize it right away. Um, it, we're working on other pools of funding to, to mobilize these programs to make them available. And I'm sure Karen through the community uh, grant, that's also what you're thinking of. Um, yep. So that these opportunities grow at the same rate of the numbers of people that we're training. So we don't create this huge XX pool of people who are like, well, what, what am I supposed to do with this training now? There's no opportunities for me to exercise it. Right, and, and paid opportunities specifically, because Lord knows there, would, there could be plenty of opportunities if we matched, but, um, but the emphasis on paid uh, is something that we'd like to prioritize. It is unbelievably 129, and I so wanna honor your time. Any other thoughts for the good of the cause now verbally or in the chat? Um, otherwise, I'm going to make this, we will make this, George, thank you for making this recording available <laughs> to everyone and we'll go from here. Nothing like being invited to ask to, to invited to say something when there's like seconds left. Um, on that note, thank you all so much for your time. It's great. We will be in touch. Appreciate you and your work. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Whew. All right. Talk to you in a minute. You want to stop the recording? <laughs>